All right, and welcome to the Metasploit Sprint demo meeting for October 17th, 2017. Getting into fall here. Um, we got some exciting, fun stuff to talk about, so let's just dive in. First thing we'd like to talk about is we've got a new and improved uh, Metasploit.com website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're excited about it, if you can't tell. Uh, it's, it's very cool. It is a little animation here um, just showing, you know, kind of a more modern uh, layout. You've got all sorts of information, such as like the latest Metasploit modules uh, that, that have been added, you have the latest pull requests that are going on, um, and you can you have links to our, our blog <coughs> posts, which lately have been, uh, related to Metasploit have been wrap-ups, uh, a link to uh, a featured video uh, from our YouTube channel, which is where you might be watching this video from, uh, top contributors, and then some all-time top contributors as well. So we've got you know some stats there, um, and then links to related uh, products and projects at the bottom. Uh, on the left side, well, it, it'll it's, it's a looping thing. On the left side, there's some links that provide some really great um, documentation for, or, or in, and pushes in the right direction for getting started for those looking to um, you know use Metasploit, try it out. Uh, the contribute links got some good information too. Yeah, show it, it lists some uh, even list, has a list of like newbie friendly uh, type of, of uh, work that, that if for those who are, you know, just starting wanting to contribute to the Metasploit project or, or folks who are existing and just want something easy to pick up. There you go. Um, but so check it out. Metasploit.com. It's the same URL as it's been. Uh, just fresh, fancy, new look. Pierce, you know, I wanted to say something real quick. Please. I feel really terrible looking at this site now and, and noticing that it was Friday, October the 13th. Yeah, <laughs> I totally forgot to add anything to the blog post about <laughs> <laughs> well, relevant to that. You've probably got another six months or so before we hit another one, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Well, yeah, we get the cadence right. Yeah, very cool. So, but yeah, come on by, check it out. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, so let's move on to things that landed. Uh, we have quite a few exploit modules going since our last meeting. Uh, pretty extensive list here. Um, a lot of remote code execution this time. Oh, yeah, these, the, yeah, yeah. There's a lot here. Um, summer appliances. Uh, the Rancher server is a Docker related item. Trend Micro shows up a couple times there. The Node.js V8 debugger one's kind of kind of fun. Um, Orient database. Um, just a lot of good stuff. Um, and there's probably one or two that didn't didn't that got in, but that just failed to get on the list there too. Yeah, and Trend Micros, we've been tearing it up on the uh, vulnerability count, haven't they? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we need to run a stat on them and see how they're doing. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, more things that landed. Um, we have a new uh, scanner module for uh, the Apache options bleed. Um, that's, that's a fun one. Which, which basically leaks um, memory from Apache servers just arbitrarily when you send it a, a specially crafted request, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, we have a new denial service module for folks using certain versions of IBM Notes client. That's old Lotus Notes for folks who remember them. Uh, with the geolocate API fix update uh, that was in the works uh, got landed this time around. Uh, cheers to Hoodie on that one. Um, uh, and Big Indian Small's uh, bind shell for JCL uh, landed. Yay. Um, we had a, a, a fix land uh, that should help non people using non-English versions of Windows. Uh, there were some places we had hard-coded checks specifically for NT authority system. So, so now our German, French, and Russian users will all feel... Not left out, right? right? They can't be exploited properly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cheers, cheers to Firefart on that one. Mm -hmm. um, and we bumped to Ruby 2.4.2, 2 right? 2.4.2. That Specifically, was, that you bumped was, us to Ruby, Brent. That was pretty painless. Uh, the only side effect is that we broke the whole model model database for a couple of days. But uh, I think we figured out that problem. And uh, <laughs> we're onwards and upwards. Nice. That's excellent. Uh, some things in the works. Uh, I, Brent, you want to talk about your payload generate command? Uh, oh, I would love to. So um, for a long time, when you generated a payload using the generate command, um, you have one set of options. And if you use MSF Venom, which is another way to generate payloads from the command line, you use 90% of the same options. But there's a little bit of a 10% difference between the two. I don't think it was intentional, but it is kind of annoying. So we have to have a PR now to actually make them the same. Um, after the exploit multi uh, <laughs> uh, sort of minor fiasco, um, I'm contemplating making this more of a Metasploit 5 type of change rather than Metasploit 4 type of change, just because of muscle memory. Even if it's an annoying thing, it's like mm, all the documentation and tutorials and wikis and all that kind of stuff all say one thing and just having a, even a slight fix, um, if we've sort of found out through trial and error, uh, can sometimes cause you know a lot of, I guess, 
what's the right word? Anx Anxiety. Yeah. Uh, Anxiety mm -hmm. is a good one too in, in, our, in our new users. So I think what we might be doing uh, moving forward, uh, I actually mentioned in the blog post. That's right. Is we're, we're, we're getting ready to actually make a Metasploit 4 stable branch. Look for some nice, um, let's say, orth orthogonality um, in the processor sense. Uh, between commands within Mesploit, but maybe not until Mesploit 5, just for the sake of not breaking those tutorials and scripts and that sort of thing. So, but right some, some good stuff coming down the road. Yeah, right on. And yeah, if you anybody wants more information about when we say Metasploit 5 and what that means, uh, go pick up the latest uh, wrap-up blog mm -hmm. um, from last Friday, I guess, yeah. and you'll you'll see more info on that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be actually kind of doing some more blog series on it as we have code up for people to look at and, um, and some more demonstrations as well. Right. And actually, if you actually if you checked out the Mesploit Town Hall at um, DerbyCon this year, or you went to Rapid7 United, you would have also seen some of those pre sneak previews. Or if you went to FSEC in Croatia this year, too. <laughs> I, I gave three presentations, is in the, and so we'll be making more public noise as we move throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, right on. Good deal. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also had some, uh, some RC exploits. Um, it had them in the works right now for Unitrans Enterprise Backup Appliance. Uh, there's a Gopher Protocol Scanner. <laughs> uh, PR, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, really like that one. There's a, I think you'd say. Go I don't to, think there's anything in Expos for scanning for Gopher right now. Is I there? don't know. No. Uh, yeah, we'll, you know. Double check that. Yeah, we'll raise the bar. And make them make yeah. them go add that if it's not there. <laughs> nice. I think this is pronounced Goit Goite Broik maybe G four. Goite Broik. Yeah, I, I don't would, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of sound like Swedish chef there. They kind of do. Yeah, but another RCE, you know. Uh, and then we've got a, a local privilege escalation for Windows. Um, this is really the uh, the CVE is the the, link, the LNK file. Um, oh right, this was a different take on it. I think if I read it right. But. I think we've had at least three or four LNK file exploits in the past year or so. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty hot stuff it's some there. Traction apparently. Yeah. yeah, good deal. And with that, let's talk about some of the teams that have been working on. Um, and so it's it's you know kind of kind of same as it ever was. Um, more progress on the aggregator. Um, the multi-panel console is coming along. Bill's uh, internally shared some some cool uh, pics of that, and, and, it's, and it's, it, it's going. I think we're on slice two of that one right now, as in the common nomenclature goes. Yeah, <laughs> it's making it so that you don't require Tmux to be installed. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that would be good. And uh, VM automation, uh, more, you know, more, more improvements there, and just it, kind of the all-encompassing you know modular based improvements. You know, A team has been uh, hacking away at the the PRQ, which has been awesome. And, oh yeah, uh, I think I've kind of fallen off the, uh, the the top list this month, and it's still <laughs> you know cranking away. Which, you know. Oh, so if Dave Maloney leaves, and now you start easing up, what's up? Man? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. the pressure's off. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool. And Pierce, please tell me that there's a real version of this Pit T Soldier Bot fortune <laughs> somewhere. I think it's a T-shirt. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe as real as it gets, Mr. T Transformer. And apparently there's a me version of David Xanatos, so, so there it is, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this what's the Xanatos team bit up to. Uh, more Ruby SMB. Uh, Dev's been digging into the DC RPC, East, RPC boy, say that three times fast, uh, stuff to this, this sprint. Um, you know, learning about that and, and how we want to approach it. Um, and the metal extensions loader wrap up uh, is, is almost done. I'm going to demo what, what I've got today, and hope the demo gods will be nicer to me today than they were last time I tried. I'm so excited to see that. <laughs> and uh, I actually, I was just telling, uh, I think you guys this morning, maybe at like you three did. or four in the morning, it was about a really cool Swift based keylogger for OS X that doesn't even pop up between permissions dialogues, yeah, which yeah, might yeah. be a great thing to leverage in this metal extension loader since it can work with arbitrary languages. Yeah, that's Ooh. pretty. That's pretty hot. Sexy. So man. Look for it. Yeah, all right. That'd be a nice one to throw in right on. Right on. And on that note, <laughs> this is a fruit company, apparently. <laughs> don't, don't know. Yeah, demos. Demos. Yeah. So time for demos. Cool. Uh, I'm going to do a quick demo of the metal extension loader. Can you, um, can you, I, I, that caught my attention when you described it. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's different from the, or, you know, the existing loading framework that, that it, it's already there? So, yeah. Uh, the, well, first of all, this is, uh, right now, we're, this is targeted uh, for metal, which itself is um, not at the moment. It's POSIX and not at the moment. We're, we're not working on the Windows version of the moment, but Linux, Nix, whatever type type devices. Uh, one thing that's different about this this version is um, it uh, it supports two different kinds of extension formats. One is a like an ELF uh, executable, and in that case, if it gets if 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 you use framework to load load it across the wire, uh, sim similar to the way extensions have worked with the existing interpreter, 
um, they're, they're, they're downloaded to the target or uploaded, however you want to look at it, to the target and then executed. In the, in the case of Metal, it'll support an ELF extension uh, that will get spawned as a separate, uh, saved to disk and spawned as a separate process. This can be useful uh, for devices, uh, embedded devices that maybe have more storage than RAM, and you, you, uh, but maybe not so great on devices that have AV running that might detect it, the file on disk. Uh, alternately, the other format it'll support is a, a binary image format where it gets downloaded uh, to the target and then um, uh, a process is, is uh, forked uh, off of the metal process, but then hollowed out and it's, it's run inside there. So it doesn't, uh, the extension itself doesn't actually get written to disk and just runs out of RAM. Um, and so with this effort, we targeted a sniffing module first, uh, since that was something that, that, that we have uh, support in the existing interpreter for that we wanted to have support for in metal. And so, uh, so that's what I'm going to show awesome. today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. There's some other cool things you can do with this model, meaning you can actually mix. You can have extensions written in different licenses than your core metal. Metal's right. written in BSD as a has a BSD license, but let's say there's a GPL library you need to talk to. I don't know Dbus to, to basically sniff all the messages between applications on the Linux desktop. You could link uh, libdbus in, which is GPL, I think. And you wouldn't be in license violation because your extension could be GPL and would be able to communicate with a BSD licensed um, interpreter or metal. And um, because they're not linked together, uh, right, they coexist. And they, they they communicate over standard and standard out standard error. So <clears throat> that's a great point. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, of course, it happens right when I need to talk. Um, so um, good point, Brent. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to start up interpreter. Uh, sorry, framework here on this side, and I've got kind of a uh, set of uh, things to automatically execute. It's basically just going to use the set the payload to interpreter reverse TCP and using the exploit multi handler. And so while well, that starts up, I will go start up uh, metal over here. Let me and big in. <coughs> Excuse me. And all right, so <coughs> these are running on my Ubuntu VM. <coughs> and now the handler's ready. So let's let's run it. Uh, started the handler. Oh hey, I think I've got a session. Let's see the sessions. Oh I do. Session. So let's interact with the session. Hey, it's interpreter. Oh. Okay. So this is a list of the commands that interpreter or metal in this case by itself you know support um, nat natively. And so now we're going to load an extension. I want to do some sniffing. Now, so now it's, 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 you see here that it supports multiple uh, extension um, for different types of, um, uh, of the same, you know, extension. So in this case, Sniffer, we have two different formats. We use ELF because that's the one that's working best. And so it's loaded. Well, let's see. Did it really load? Do we have new? We do. We have new Sniffer commands. Excellent. Okay. And over here, you can see that uh, there is a debug output that says, "Oh, I started a child process." So this, 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 uh, what happened just now is we we did the load command, actually downloaded the the elf uh, executable uh, to Metal. Metal spawned a new a fork new process and exact our our extension, our sniffer extension in there. So now it's running as a child, and so we can do we can say, "Give us the give us the interfaces." I want to see what I can sniff on. What's available? Sniffer. I'm completely not working. There it goes. So it's okay. Here's your interfaces. Great. Let's do, let's start a capture on interface two. Capture start on interface two. Great. Hey, how's that going? How many, how many packets have we got? Oh, stats. Okay. So you can kind of see this. <coughs> it's capturing, you know, more and more packets are going in the buffer. Great. Okay. I'm done. Oh, I need to tell which where I'm done. I'm done there. Great. We've captured 358 packets. This many bytes. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we will dump. We will re dump them. That will allow us to download what we've captured. There's a pcap. So we dump to. So we're going to dump interface two to a file called uh, foo.pcap. Okay. Download complete. Convert to pcap. Pcap file written. Done. We come over up here. And let's see, pberry uh, sort by the uh, oh, I know I need to. Oh, funny, my terminal disappeared. All right, I had a terminal window set up for since I'm running in a VM. 
<coughs> excuse me, I copy off the, here we go. Copy this down to OSX so we can actually look at it in Wireshark. So this is what uh, Wireshark will start up and this is what was captured. So I don't know if I can embiggen that. Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay. And so, yeah, so here's here's a capture uh, of what we saw on the wire, mostly SSH, back and forth. Um, <clears throat> something something nice about this uh, setup, too, is, is it now supports. So let's say I want to start another capture uh, and start to... Um, let's, let's see. So we can see, you can say, you know, whatever the buffer you want, 50,000 packets, and we can give it a Berkeley packet filter syntax um, uh, uh, filter to, to, to match or not match on as you, as you like. Uh, so we say port um, 80. So let's say let's only look at HTTP traffic. And now if we look at stats, you can see that it's, you know, there's pretty much nothing coming on because I don't have any kind of... Uh, HTTP traffic uh, going on here. Oh, and I don't know. I don't know if I have it set up to where I can actually hit that. Uh, I should be able to do. Let's see here. New window. So curl. Oh, oh yeah, I can't spell curl. Ah, there we go. So I'm not zero, not zero, not one. Let's see. Yeah, four days. So connection refused. Not running anything. But let's see if it if it captured those packets. And it's not saying it did. Rah, demo what gods. Was, uh, what was interface two? Is that the loopback? Uh, no, you're right. That's not. You're right. It was. Uh, should be ten dot zero dot two dot four. Thank you, Jen. So it should be. Ha! All right, demo gods. Um, maybe it's not. Yeah, it should be is it S8. So S8 is oh, 3.15. Uh, uh, let's see, it's all these all these interfaces. All right, let's see there. It's okay. <laughs> this is bane of my existence. I swear this works. Uh, I can think of some really amazing stuff you can now do with this. Now that yeah. you've got this basic infrastructure in, you could actually have, well, one thing, you can have plugins that run at different permission levels. Um, something we've always wondered is how do we do um, local exploits on Linux and how do we load them in and how do we get that second shell that's running it with the escalated privileges without killing our existing session? You can make them basically run over this exact same mechanism as a secondary process that's escalated and uh, without having to kill your initial session. That's a, it's always been a problem we've had with, with local exploits is what do you do with the two sessions that you end up with. Um, and we can actually now tunnel through through each other in, in a similar way that the name pipe stuff works in, in Windows. Um, there's actually a, a pretty cool path that, that comes through this um, that we can leverage. Yeah, give up. yeah no, that's a, that's a good point. I wonder whether this can be made like a little more interactive. Like, for example, you have like a client running on your, on your framework side, right? Like, and then you can tell it, hey, this is the first session displays some packets uh, on the remote side, and then decide uh, to change different filter or do different things. Oh, sure. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you look at the low-level interface, this already, I mean, this sniffer thing existed already. Uh -huh. the, 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 um, but there's a low-level interface that you can write to, there's a client API, so you can build your own user interface on top of it that would allow you to do real-time monitoring or whatever, whatever okay. you might want to do. Yeah, so nice. it's certainly possible. Yeah, if, uh, right now, the use case I see here is more like a capture and dump, capture mm -hmm. and dump, right? Right. Nice to have more interactive. Yeah, and so that's the. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. What we've kind of we've kind of started shifting towards that you know, okay. with some of the other stuff. But to Brent's point, the existing module. This is just this one just mimics existing module behavior. Okay. <clears throat> but you know, a lot of people are used to that kind of um, instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question. Um, so it looks like when you run metal, it's when you're simulating that you got a shell somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you say that this going to process off of the metal process. Right. What happens when when you migrate the original process to another process or stuff like that? Is that still uh, it's, it still it still goes with it or you know like how 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 does it happen? It would be a child. Oh, so if you migrate to another process, usually yeah, what, what that's you do usually when, what they do, right? Like they migrate somewhere. What actually happens during migration 
um, at least on Windows, which is really the only place we have implemented, is you inject a whole new session, you pass the connection parameters across a, a, a socket to the other guy, so you basically do file descriptor passing, mm -hmm. and then you just reconnect back over that. And so you basically you kill the old process and you create create an evil twin. So you you uh, what what Windows Recovery does is it reloads all the extensions over again. Okay. Um, so it keeps track of all the ones that it loaded, so it just refreshes them as new child processes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Right on. All right. So that's all I had. Cool. Is there is any? Job. Thank you. Yeah. Is a nice. last call for demos? If anybody had anything else last minute they wanted to show, going once. It's very cool. I want to give a shout out to Lonnie Best for joining today. He's the uh, the only non team member that's on the, the call right now. <laughs> so uh, thanks, thanks for joining. Hey, um, Lonnie. <laughs> awesome. That's it. Cool. All right. Hey, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Good job, everybody.